Okay, hi again, dear listeners. I hope everyone who wanted to to listen to us is already here. So let's start. Welcome to our webinar. Its title is Automation of Web Testing When Game is Worth the Candle. And uh, we have two great speakers, two great specialists who will join me today. It's Martin and Dana. Uh, with us, Dana is program manager at Kia Test Lab. Uh, that's I hope you all know us. It's independent provider of gear and testing services. Dana has a great experience in testing, more than seven years, more than three years in program manager management. So uh, Dana is really great in managing web and test automation project. And uh, here is us also Martin. He is a co-founder and CEO of Desabot. Uh, uh, good partners of us, uh, guys are changing the world of test automation with the amazing tool. Uh, and uh, Martin has more than five years in, of experience in software development, software testing, test automation. So uh, the discussion should be uh, very interesting. Dana, Martin, uh, thanks for joining me today. Hi, Chris. Hi, Martin. I'm so good to hear you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks, then, Dana. Good to be with you today. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so today we'll talk about uh, some specifics of test automation, automating in web projects. So um, I believe we shall start from from the very beginning. Uh, um, Dana, could you could you tell us about uh, web testing in general? I guess it will be useful. Yes, yeah, sure. So first of all. Uh, web testing is good to increase the number of would-be customers by providing people with a reliable, secure, and compatible software. Um, web, web testing isn't only the verification of software functionality. It includes a wide range of testing activities that all together ensure a high-quality web software. So under web software, I mean web apps, both static and dynamic, uh, it's also e-commerce solutions, web games, web apps with uh, CMS, websites, and so on. And um, there is no universal procedure or algorithm that suits testing of every kind of web software. The testing process depends on software specifics and its purposes. Um, but in general, we test uh, web software according to the following steps. So it's analysis of project specs and requirements, uh, defining of test objectives and test data, uh, preparing of test strategy cases and use scenarios, uh, then execution of these test cases, and processing of test results and bug reporting. Okay, cool. And, and uh, OK, if you talk about web projects, um, Martin, how do you think when to start test automation? Yeah. Um, I agree with Dana. Uh, testing is uh, quite complex and and huge huge thing. So uh, it's not easy question when and when to start. But um, I think the simplest guideline is look out for repetition. You know, uh, as Dana said, it depends on the needs of particular company. Uh, one size does not fit everyone, it's evolving. But let's to try imagine that we are a small to medium company and every 14 days we publish an update of our service. At first, we just need to know that the app works. Perhaps it is enough that the users can register and sign in. But later it's necessary to ensure that all critical journeys work and even later, we will start asking yourself, how much time do we spend on repeat testing? What is the change over time? Uh, do we have to repeat an unsuccessful update? Maybe we have deployment misconfiguration again. How often does this happen? Do we, do we have repeat errors in the same functionality? And this should warn us, dude, you have a problem. So, if we answer these questions, we have an idea of whether there is a problem somewhere. So, before test automation, I will start with some active monitoring to ensure that my app is working and gradually move to repetitive tests. 
a regression testing makes an ideal starting point. Tests that change very little from one iteration to the next are perfect for automation. Setting up the same tests again and again is poor use of resources, you know, particularly when agile teams are releasing software frequently. So, I yeah, think so. That's, 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 that's the start point. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Very, very informative. Thanks, Martin. And uh, uh, guys, what what directly should the company do before it starts with with test, test automation? Um, yes, Martin. <laughs> so um, we recommend doing manual testing first. Uh, it's necessary to understand if the product is ready for automation. Uh, the method that um, you can automate only a stable part of functionality or um, the software under test. If there are too many blockers or changes to be made, then the uh, development of auto test will be useless as you will have to re rewrite all the tests all the time. Uh, that's why we execute manual testing before test automation. Um, we usually prepare the test cases that will be used later for automation, so it, they are used both in manual and automation testing. Uh, at the end of test cycle, we analyze the results and decide what functions to cover with auto tests. Uh, that could be like general functionality like authorization, registration, and user profile. We then prepare an estimation for covering a great functionality with auto tests, um, decide on what environment, what will be the best one, and uh, recommend the tool that corresponds to the project specifics the most. Yeah. Martin, what, Martin, what, what uh, well, you well, 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 yeah, it's, uh, thanks, Susanna, for a great, great summary, you know. Uh, she's, she's completely right. And uh, maybe I will add uh, some, some more questions, you know. Uh, so what will automate and who will do it? I think it's a big question and differ and differ in, comp in companies. So do it programmer, manual tester, or support engineer will be run test as a part of continuous deployment, or do we choose free solution or commercial solution? A lot of questions in the air. Um, so yeah, definitely so. Yeah, definitely. So for maybe for for norm programmers, uh, I would I would recommend you know alternatives uh, to known known um, Selenium ID. There's a lot of Chrome plugins that are free. For example, Catalon or Count to Selenium ID. And if you are considering integration into CI and need more robust but still simple solution, you can consider, for example, the Sable. <laughs> But um, there is a lot of great open source solutions for programmers. So uh, we all know a Selenium WebDriver and Robot Framework. Uh, I like WebDriver IO. It's a uh, WebDriver binding for Node.js. Cypress uh, is uh, also a very interesting solution. Uh, I really like their time traveling uh, feature. It's awesome. And maybe the Galen framework, uh, you know, for visual layout control is certainly worth exploring. So uh, it's a um, huge area of possibilities for both programmers and node programmers. Yeah, and um, in general, when uh, actually when we're talking about software testing, I believe. Uh, People actually start thinking about test automation. They have test automation in mind when speaking about it, and uh, I'm I'm not sure that uh, that automation is uh, possible in case of all web testing projects. Yes, you should you know evaluate user interface, user experience, uh, and uh, I guess only human tester is able to, to verify usability. And uh, as far as they know, the principle of test automation is. Uh, widely used during uh, the verification of, uh, of web software. Yes, um, you're right. Um, manual testing is uh, usually a traditional approach for quality verification. 
And in case of web testing projects, uh, customers usually think about manual testing as user experience and more emotional components. Um, like that's really important for the web, web software. That's why testing uh, conducted by human being is more optional, optimal. But if we have to understand that if we test a complex system and uh, require the execution of routine actions or complex calculations, then best automation can save you a lot of money and time. <laughs> sounds good, sounds good. And, and um, so when, when automation is a benefit for web testing, how do you think? Martin? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I saw a lot of companies make uh, test automation just, you know, for automation. So I believe that test automation makes sense if you can count on it. And from my point of view, it means that your tests are up to date. Your tests are not a sleeping beauty and they should follow your app changes. Uh, you should run them regularly, several times a day, not once a month before the release. Uh, your monitor health, you monitor health status for your tests. So you are watching, uh, true positive rate, true negative rate for your tests. So, because you don't need tests which uh, every run flash like red, green, disk light, you know. Um, it's important the cost of maintenance is significantly lower than the cost of manual testing. And of course, the feedback speed is significantly better than manual testing. So I think, uh, base, basic measures, uh, can show you, uh, test automation, uh, makes sense and could help you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, Mm, such a question, such a question, yeah, in, uh, in the majority of, uh, of cases, yeah, mm, test automation of web testing is conducted by, uh, test automation engineers, you know, those very technical guys who write the code and, uh, so on. Is it possible for, for many of team to do automation? Yes, Dan. Uh, Martin has already mentioned about uh, test automation tools for non-programmers or for a uh, manual team that can easily use it. And uh, we also know uh, often case when a manual tester decides to switch to automation. So it's also possible. Oh, yeah. This, uh, this case of switching is so, so popular that I guess among us is one, one guy who can speak about it a bit, yeah? <laughs> Martin, could you please <laughs> yeah, share your, your own experience of you know, transition yeah, yeah. from manual to test automation engineer? Thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, you're right, this is, this is interesting. Um, I've been helping a few companies where this process is again through. And actually, this transition is a matter of mindset. Technology is not so important, but the mindset. Uh, these people mostly work as manual testers or had as support engineers. So they were perfectly aware of their application and the problems of their customers. So they are truly an invaluable asset for their company. The problem is the fear that automation will add unjustified work to them or on the other hand, takes them all their work. But the truth could not be farther from the reality. Uh, testing the software is so complex that it will need testers for a long time. But automation will help us to get rid of repetitive tasks and focus on more interesting challenges like a user experience, security, performance. So from particular point of view, I believe it's ideal for, for this group of users to start with automation tools that do not require programming knowledge, but still still can bring some benefits to them. So I think there's tremendous difference in how to record useful tests or write a simple test script in Selenium and finally write an own huge test framework. Uh, you can guess the latter requires very experienced developers, uh, at least if the company does not want to start again the whole process in a year. <laughs> Yeah, I believe there are no, not much companies <laughs> who wants to do it. Yeah, but, but it happens. Uh, believe me, it happens. 
<laughs> okay, and uh, let's come back to test automation tools. Um, uh, as I know, there are open source and uh, commercial solutions. Uh, which ones are better to use, um, uh, let's say, to, to ensure fruitful automation? Uh, well, it's a difficult question because um, proper framework depends on several factors. And uh, the main ones are software type, like is it a desktop, mobile, web application. Um, it also depends on available budget, which is always take place, and time frames. How much time do we have to write the scripts? So sometimes a commercial tool is more suitable for a project than the open source uh, due to its features and uh, its price will be fully justified. Uh, besides, <coughs> When selecting a tool, we also pay attention to testing objective, objectives. What I mean, um, you, for example, you can't use uh, Selenium to automate drag and drop function. For this purpose, we use Eggplant if its fee meets the project budget, as Eggplant is a commercial tool. Also, we have a um, specialist who is currently automating Outlook plugin using Test Complete. So the two records scripts automatically, uh, but we still sometimes have to edit the scripts manually by extending this functionality. Um, regarding the tools, we also use X by Odin because of its features to record scripts automatically, to store scenarios in different formats like Excel, and to support test execution using the same Selenium. So it's really useful. Okay. 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 Martin, what, Martin, what what do you think? You are like a specialist in commercial tools, I believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't want to say that commercial tools are better than open source. You know, I I can't say that. Open source is great, and I I hope that Tissabot will soon contribute to the world open source uh, too. Um, the problem is that if your target user is not developer. Uh, so you have to just uh, wait for someone to help you or fix a uh, annoying bug. Um, on the other hand, commercial products take this as their responsibility. I believe the product doesn't make lines of code. You know, the product, it's a service. It's important to help the partner to achieve its goals. So as in the whole testing, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I, I haven't seen that. Uh, having no experience in test automation, I, I still will be able to use test about. <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> of course. Uh, sure. Also, there are some solutions for programming the scripts, recording them. Uh, uh, Martin, could you please explain the difference? Yeah, of course. Uh, so for programming, obviously, you have to be able to program. Um, uh, your tests are limited only by your crea creativity, uh, but. Too much creativity could be harmful. <laughs> yeah, sometimes uh, it's better. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, yeah. Uh, and you have a test in great detail under control. So, but on the other hand, if you write your test from the scratch, you often re reinvent the wheel again and again. And recording tools, uh, of course, you don't have to be able to program, but Recorded tests have limited expression ability. Uh, sometimes could be good. Uh, you have control only at the top level. Recording is often faster than programming, at least for basic scenarios. But in both cases, you should, sh you should think about reusability and maintenance of the test. I think this is the most important thing. Yeah, really useful information. Thanks, thanks, Martin, Dana. Um, okay, let's uh, let's imagine. Let's say I I'm just a newcomer in web testing, and uh, what what pitfalls should I be ready for? Uh, well, here I should say that uh, web testing is a complex procedure that includes the verification of a number of various software aspects. For example, uh, software functionality, performance, compatibility, security, including security of server, also graphical user interface, 
Uh, web testing helps to detect server and database issues, scalability problems, session issues, improper work of cookies. Don't forget about the content and its localization. So uh, testers also check links, images, input fields, ads, uh, feeds. Um, we shouldn't forget about also cross-browser testing. Uh, the goal of cross-browser testing is to make sure that the software operates properly, uh, regardless of the mobile device and browser uh, is, user can have. So what I can say, <laughs> web testers conduct a huge amount of work to ensure a positive user experience. And I can continue uh, describing the, the parts that tester uh, verify during the next few hours, but I'm afraid we don't have this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's so uh, okay. I, I see web testing is some some kind of complex thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I uh, I'm not sure. I have to ask my next question, but still I will. Uh, if I if I decided to to shift to web for uh, web automation, what what difficulties will I face? Uh, then you are very brave. So <laughs> um, as then I said. Uh, it's it's not it's not easy and um i believe everyone will face upcoming challenges uh when you start with automation project uh you have to find answer for what to automate and how and at the beginning please think small uh Next question and next problem. Do I have a testing infrastructure or I just want to use some kind of production infrastructure? God, no, don't do it. Uh, do I have stable test data? And this is the crucial and quite expensive part of the equation. Uh, and finally, do I have robust, robust tests? When our tests updated, uh, it's much more process thing. Who is responsible for test maintenance? So I, I believe there are basic issues you have to you have to face up. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, really many issues. <laughs> but don't worry, Stan. You can easily avoid them. Yeah. yeah. You you are brave, Stan. <laughs> Okay, guys. <laughs> Sounds great. Um, okay, let's let's proceed to such a question based on on your experience in web testing, web automation. Uh, what uh, what can be the tips for for okay, specialists who are new in web testing? Um, let me start from uh, tips for web testing. So I would say that the most essential thing is to clear up the purposes of development software. So each tester should realize the system specifics clearly and should have a proper vision of how people will use it and why. So uh, we start from determining testing objective and it's of importance for objectives to be measurable. Uh, they are the grounds for precise testing. Uh, the next is uh, that same objectives uh, should be also prioritized. So you should start the verification from the most critical and time to market features. Um, for example, when you're testing an online banking apps, then uh, you have to agree that usability and user interface are not the most important things, right? So people will worry more about security of the application. And in another case, like when we test the solutions for healthcare and medical industry, uh, testers should thoroughly check the system functionality because uh, if something wrong is with functionality, it can harm people's health. So um, if you talk about software compatibility, then it's not necessary to run all of the tests in all browsers as it can be very time consuming. And actually, uh, the chances that something work improperly are very low. So uh, here, the best approach is to run all the test cases in one browser, 
uh, or the most popular browsers among targeted users. And then select the most important scenarios and run them on the rest of the browsers. Um, we also shouldn't forget about web services uh, because uh, if there uh, exists in the application, it's better to test them separately before actually integration with the application. Um, and uh, if talk about processing and managing test results, um, to keep uh, everything in one place, do not forget about uh, some uh, bug report or uh, some discussion. Uh, we always recommend to use bug tracking and test case management systems. Uh, they really helped to prepare uh, useful reports and statistics in a convenient form uh, for almost each level of management. And my last tip will be that uh, let the automation do the regression tests because they would allow to avoid human factor in repetitive work and I would say to sleep better. <laughs> yeah, <Wow>. useful one. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Martin, what are your life hacks for, for test automation? Oh, so, sorry, I have no test automation life hacks. Just, just recommendation maybe. So identify what you want to automate and then make only 20% from the beginning. Just think small. Uh, ensure that your tests are short and quick. Uh, don't use too many assertions. Uh, keep your tests simple. Actually, I don't like conditional logic in tests. I believe it's uh, quite a problem. And finally, be brave and remove your unstable tests. You don't need to have unnecessary unreliable tests and test regularly. And I think that's, that's all. <laughs> OK, perfect. Uh, Dana, Martin, thank you for a very informative session. And uh, I can see we have uh, a couple of questions from, uh, from our attendees. Um, I believe uh, now I am also ready for web automation, so I could uh, answer this question by myself. But we'll <laughs> try. <laughs> <Last time>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can try. <laughs> yeah, we, are, we, are, we are here. We are here. We are here, we are here to help you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's. Um, I'll, I will give it to you at this stage. I, I, next time I will be more. I'm not prepared because I'm a bit nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> this time it's okay. <laughs> okay, thanks, guys. So, uh, so uh, we have a um, question from Eric. Uh, uh, he asks uh, how, how to combine manual testing uh, and uh, automation. Um, if you don't mind, I will answer. Um, it's actually a good question because uh, nowadays uh, this question pops uh, almost in every project and every company. And um, to get the answer, uh, just let's imagine that uh, we are working in an environment where new features come out rapidly and uh, builds already every few hours. So every few uh, features may break already existing functionality. Um, so uh, Q-Team in this case has uh, no time to do uh, full regression testing manually, right? So um, it's a good idea to automate regression testing while the Q-Team do manual testing of these newly added features. When, uh, then, when uh, manual testing is completed, um, some bug fixes, regression testing is bad. So this new, when these new features become stable, uh, testers start to cover uh, these new features with auto tests. Um, so next time, these features will be uh, included to regression tests, and uh, the uh, will be covered with them and uh, 
everyone will know that uh, it didn't th that a new features will not break uh, the already tested functionality. Was it clear, Stan? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think Jana answered it very well. <laughs> Um, Martin, do you have something to add? So let's let's proceed to some other questions. Yeah. Uh, um, okay, okay, we actually have a question. Uh, okay, a lot of questions. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> strange. <laughs> um, we have a question from Kate. Uh, she asks, um, does uh, automation covers only functional tests? Mm. Um, Martin? Uh, yeah, I will try answer. Um, I, I think uh, you can use this automation for um, like much broader area. Uh, for example, you can focus on um, performance testing. So class solution when you can uh, monitor your performance measures for your web application and uh, it works similar like a uh, regression from the functional point of view. So you are able to find out any problem, maybe some scalable issue or uh, problem in infrastructure. So I believe there's possibility to automate, to automate uh, some kind of performance, performance testing uh, there are possibilities uh, for automation in security area, uh, in security testing. So uh, it depends on your on your needs and on your budget. Uh, I can say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, and, uh, and um, our next question is from from Jeff. I was wondering what criteria do you consider for okay. automating the tests? I guess, Martin, it's uh, also something you could explain. How this mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure if I, if I, if I get the, the question, but I will try to answer it. Uh, uh, I think... Uh, I think uh, mm, you know, when it's, uh, when it's useful to... Start, yeah. Actual automation method to do it manually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I as I said, Dana, uh, I think uh, quite important thing is the stability of the of the part of the system you want to test. So uh, if it's if the system is uh, I can I, I don't want to say frozen, but uh, the part of application is stable. It's good candidate to to make test automation. Uh, another thing, and I think this is the quite problematic, how this part of your application is dependent on the data. Uh, I mean on the test data. And uh, if you are able to ensure that your tests have uh, stable data in every run. Uh, it's good pointer that you that you can automate this functionality. A lot of companies try to automate something, but um, they they don't have a stable testing infrastructure, and it, their uh, testing data have quick variation. You know they are they are changing, so it's almost impossible to automate this part of the system. So. I think it's quite important to look uh, which kind of data you need for this test, what you are able to ensure maybe fake or uh, mock, and and this is this is quite important from the point of automation. Okay, thank you, thank you, Martin. Um, very detailed answer. Um, we have a question from Ida. Uh, how to start automation if we have no automation specialist in the team? Uh, Donna, maybe you can answer. Yeah, actually, Martina has al already mentioned uh, that uh, during the uh, webinar. So, uh, 
uh, answer from another site to understand also better. Um, uh, it's also possible to follow multi-layered approach when the uh, development developers start to automate from unit tests because uh, they already know the code and uh, these unit tests also required in our world and in Agile and unit tests can uh, give the first results. It, they don't cover the user interface, they don't cover a lot of things, but it could be a start. Uh, at the same time, testers can um, identify the scope of automation and uh, use them to search for a good tool. So, uh, as Martin said, it's better to start from a single tool. Uh, so, team studies uh, two features and uh, working principle. And when the team has gained enough skills, they uh, gradually move towards automating other repetitive tasks. Um, or if the team doesn't have enough time for doing both types of testing, manual and automating, it's also always possible to integrate um, an external high qualified automation tester. So there are a few approaches and um, there are uh, you can choose one of them depending on your project and your team skills. Okay, okay very good. Thank you. Thanks, Dana. Uh, a question from, from Anthony. Uh, which impact by Agile can you see on uh, an automation process? Um, Dana Martin, how does, how does Agile influence on yeah. question analysis and automation testing? Um, so maybe we will try answer or just answer part part sure. of the question. <laughs> uh, well, for me, uh, I believe that for agile is uh, important uh, the speed and flexibility. I think it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, most important thing in agile. So from the point of automation, uh, there's the feedback loop. So I believe. Uh, the most important thing is to get the uh, feedback quickly. You, it's important to know uh, in in which state is my application. So um, I believe the the feedback speed is or feedback loop is the the most important thing in in connection with agile, in connection with uh, continuous deployment, uh, because uh, we don't want to wait. Uh, several days or, or weeks um, when we uh, code some feature, test the feature, uh, repeat or um, fix the feature and again test the feature. So I believe uh, there is the place for automation in Agile. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, Martin, Donna, yeah, have something to add? Uh, I fully agree. Uh, again, I'm more manual tester, so um, looking um, and described a lot of types of testing. Yeah, we have unit tests, we have functional tests, we have exploratory usability performance tests. So yeah. how to understand uh, which of them have, can be automated. And uh, in Agile, uh, there are actually uh, a theory of reference that uh, they divided these types of testing uh, between uh, uh, what can be done manually and what can be done automatically. So, for example, unit tests, they are uh, made by the robot and automated, or there could be used to the test driven development when the develop, developer uh, write the code uh, or write the test before actually writing the code. Um, then functional tests and uh, testing prototypes uh, can be either automated or done manually. So some parts like regression tests can be automated and the rest would be made manually. Uh, the next type like exploratory usability, user acceptance and um, important parts before the release like alpha beta tests are usually made manually. And then the 
uh, last steps like performance, load, security are usually uh, made by some specific tools. So it's uh, more uh, using some automation tools. Yeah, I, I, I fully agree with Diana. Maybe I'd like to add that, uh, you know, test automation just don't don't save you. You don't need to do other other kind of testing as said Diana. It's very important. Uh, test automation is just a uh, safe line for you. So yeah. you know, you know what is happening and in which cases and, and you have some kind of control, but you need to do uh, other kind of testing uh, to ensure quality, user experience, security and uh, other other things. So uh, I, I believe a lot of, lot of people now thinking that they start with test automation and it's enough. Uh, it's not true, uh, to be honest. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> very, detailed, very detailed answer from, from your boss. And, and uh, we have a question from, uh, from Olga. Uh, maybe you could uh, recommend some technical books uh, to test automation. Preferably for my design device and uh, visible architecture for the test project. Martin, uh, Dana, any ideas? Maybe some specific resources to visit so just to, to, get, to get more experience in test automation. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not sure. Uh, actually, I, I have a lot of uh, internet resources because uh, they are current state, you know. Uh, I'm not sure if I can recommend uh, Recommend, recommend some kind of book, but uh, what is good resource uh, of knowledge? Uh, there is a lot of uh, learning, uh, learning uh, courses. Uh, I, I like Udemy. So if you want to start with test automation, maybe there is a lot of, lot of, lot of courses focus on Selenium or uh, Appium for mobile, mobile, mobile automation. So. Maybe this could be the start point, uh, and maybe I will try start, try to find some kind of this course. And uh, because reading, uh, I believe reading uh, it's not so informative as you get your hand dirty, you know. <laughs> yeah, I fully also agree because um, the book allows to like understand uh, from the beginning at the end of the whole process, but uh, it will not help in actual work. So uh, it's better to combine these like reading of some theoretical knowledges and uh, actually practicing them. And yeah. in the internet, there are a lot of uh, courses or web tools where you can try the writing of the scripts online. And uh, we wouldn't recommend something now because uh, always depends on the tool that will be used so or language that will be used because the uh, automation scripts can be written in uh, Java, C Sharp, JavaScript, Python, etc. So there is uh, too many um, languages and frameworks. So uh, start from choosing the tool and then uh, investigating of uh, how to use it, uh, reading FAQ, knowledge base, etc. Yeah, and, and maybe, maybe if you want to oper Going to hardly uh, gain 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 your age. Just uh, just find a find a job, uh, you know, like a newbie there, and uh, with some senior 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 buddy, will who will uh, teach you, uh, will give you a feedback. Um, I believe this uh, best experience for anyone who want to gain new knowledge, new experience, uh, because. Yeah, uh, courses are great and better than books, but work in a real company, in a real process is uh, much more better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, thank it's you. Not, it's, it's not easy, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm not sure about it. And uh, we have a question from Yuri. Uh, from what should I start uh, automation? Uh, 
Uh, Yuri, I'm not sure about the question. Could you please clarify for us? Uh, you mean uh, actually start working uh, in the field of test automation or start automating some specific project? Uh, it will help us to, to understand the question better. Oh, you mean start, start learning? Uh, so I guess it's very connected to the previous question from Olga, but uh, yeah, Martin, uh, Dana, what is your suggestion for for the guys and girls who want to start in, in test automation? From what to start? Dana, Martin? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Martin, could you just answer? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just researched in pre previous previous answer. Um, yeah. Find the course. Uh, maybe you can start uh, on some open source project. Uh, there's a lot of open source project, and they are missing unit tests. They are missing functional tests. So. This is a great place you can start. You can get your hand dirty and you get the feedback from the community. Maybe this could be paid uh, to gain some experience, right? Some kind of real experience you can later prove to your new employer. So maybe this could be interesting. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. I don't know. Sana? <laughs> um. Yeah, yeah, I guess uh, actually the question is answered, uh, and uh, I I guess we're running out of time, so <laughs> uh, I have to say thank you to, to Martin, to Dana for, for being with me today. It was really very informative and very cool format uh, of our today's webinar. Uh, thank you, all, thanks to all our attendees for joining us today. Uh, very, very good questions, uh, very interesting audience, thank you. I uh, hope you also enjoyed the session. Uh, please feel free to ask any question if you have uh, after the webinar via email or any other contacts. And uh, stay tuned for, for our next webinars. Yeah, it was actually a very interesting experience. Thank you, Stan. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, uh, our listeners, for the questions. Um, yeah. It was a great uh, webinar, and I hope uh, you we we tried to prepare some useful tips and uh, information. I hope that you could use it in your life. So I'm just wishing you a wonderful day. Yeah, thank you, thank you, guys. I, I have a great time with you, and um, have a nice, beautiful day. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, think, I think it's the most important thing. Have a nice, beautiful day. That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.